You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Wednesday, June 26th. Former President Donald Trump, the standout Republican nominee, addressed supporters in Philadelphia discussing his struggle with swearing in speeches after receiving a letter from Franklin Graham, CEO of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Trump recounted Graham's plea, quote, It could be so much better if you didn't use foul language. But Trump contended, he's wrong, while admitting efforts to reduce cursing. Highlighting his speech earlier at the Faith and Freedom Coalition's Road to Majority Conference in D.C., Trump declared, quote, I was really good. I didn't interject. Although he mentioned plans to undo President Biden's executive actions, Trump acknowledged that avoiding swear words fully in lengthy speeches is challenging, stating, quote, give me one or two words. Evangelical leader Lance Wallnow has accused Saddleback Church founder Rick Warren of politically exploiting the allegations against ex-Gateway Church leader Robert Morris following accusations of child sexual abuse by Cindy Clemeshire, which led to Morris resigning and losing his advisory role in Trump's 2024 campaign. Warren, who expressed outrage over the abuse, was lambasted by Wallnow as a, quote, never-Trumper Bible-thumper for avoiding divisive topics and failing to address political issues, including LGBTQ agendas and abortion. Wallnow noted Warren was once his mentor, but their paths diverged over ideological disputes. Pastor A. Jackson and Shane Eidelman echoed Wallnow's sentiments, labeling Warren's outrage as selective and inconsistent. The Episcopal Church House of Bishops, during their 81st General Convention in Louisville, Kentucky, decisively rejected resolutions labeling Israel an apartheid state and supporting divestment against it. Instead, they passed several measures calling for peaceful resolutions. Notably, Resolution D-013 condemned both the October 7 Hamas attack on Israel that resulted in about 1,200 civilian deaths and Israel's military response in Gaza, while advocating for a two-state solution. Southeast Florida Bishop Peter Eaton argued against using apartheid to describe Israel, stating it's discredited academically. Northern Indiana Bishop Edward Little warned that such resolutions could skew their mediation roles. Additional resolutions urged U.S. support for Gaza's rebuilding and promoted peace through equal rights in Israel-Palestine. These resolutions now proceed to the Episcopal House of Deputies. An atheist parolee in Colorado, Mark Janney, who was jailed for refusing to allow a court order to partake in a Christian mission's worship services, has secured a $100,000 settlement with the Colorado Department of Corrections. Represented by the ACLU and Americans United for Separation of Church and State, Janney argued his First Amendment rights were violated when he was required to attend Bible study and church services at the rescue mission in Fort Collins as a parole condition. Americans United President Rachel Lasser heralded the settlement, stating, quote, Jailing someone for refusing to attend worship services and to engage in Bible study is not religious freedom, it's religious coercion. The 10th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals previously ruled in Janney's favor, highlighting the state's obligation to provide a non-coercive residence option. This episode is sponsored in part by World Relief, the Christian humanitarian organization we trust to tackle the challenges at the border and around the world. Today, the world is experiencing an unprecedented crisis. Hundreds of millions of people are being driven from their homes because of violent conflict, climate change, and extreme poverty, the most in recorded history. More than 36 million people are seeking safety outside their countries as refugees. If this breaks your heart, you're not alone. The need for immediate relief and sustainable solutions is urgent, but there's good news. You can help. When you become a partner with World Relief, you are creating lasting change for people across the globe, addressing the root causes of displacement globally and extending a compassionate welcome to the weary, the vulnerable, and the persecuted at our door. This month, when you partner with us with your gift of $25, World Relief is giving away two free e-learning courses in honor of World Refugee Day. These courses provide practical guidance on how to show the love of Jesus to your immigrant and refugee neighbors. That's access to two free e-learning courses from World Relief with your one-time or monthly gift of $25. This offer ends June 30th. So visit worldrelief.org slash refugee day today to learn more. That's worldrelief.org slash refugee day. Check it out today by clicking the link in the podcast show notes below. Our thanks to World Relief for sponsoring this episode.
A coalition of secular legal organizations, including the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the ACLU, and Americans United for Separation of Church and State, has filed a lawsuit in federal court against a new Louisiana law mandating the display of the Ten Commandments in public school classrooms. Plaintiffs, represented by a religiously diverse group of parents, argue the law is unconstitutional and violates the First Amendment. Reverend Jeff Sims, a plaintiff and Presbyterian pastor, criticized the law for promoting religious intolerance. Louisiana Governor Jeff Landry, who signed House Bill 71, asserts the Ten Commandments are foundational to U.S. law, while Attorney General Liz Murrell has pledged to defend the legislation, drawing parallels to historical references of Moses at the U.S. Supreme Court. The Joseph Project, a humanitarian organization founded by the Messianic Jewish Alliance of America, is raising awareness about the escalating threats from Hezbollah amidst Iran-backed attacks on Israel. Susie Salway, a project manager based in Jerusalem, shared that the organization provides critical aid to both Jews and Arabs affected by terrorism, including food, clothing, and medicine. Since October 7, when Hamas initiated attacks resulting in over 1,200 deaths, the Joseph Project has distributed $16.1 million in aid. Despite its messianic roots, the organization does not evangelize, making its assistance universally accepted. Recently, a Hezbollah strike hit a messianic Jewish worship and aid center in Kiryat Shmona, causing significant damage. U.S. President Joe Biden expressed concerns about a wider Middle East conflict, emphasizing the need for diplomatic efforts to curb further escalation. Conservative Hispanic Christian activists are raising concerns over a lack of faith in churches, attributing it to Hispanic support for Democrats despite conservative biblical values. Speaking at the Faith and Freedom Coalition's Road to Majority Conference, Edianas Morales, Florida and Puerto Rico Hispanic director, emphasized that Hispanic voters need to align with their conservative beliefs, stating, quote, We are conservatives. Our families are the best things. Meanwhile, Dorcas Hernandez, founder of Peru's Don't Mess With Our Kids movement, highlighted their success in rallying 1.5 million people to oppose progressive education policies, expanding their reach to 30 Latin American nations and the U.S. Despite these efforts, exit polls show most Hispanic voters support Democrats. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. We encourage you to follow the show in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or third-party podcast players like Overcast and Pocket Cast. You can also download the Edify app for free and listen to all the podcasts on the Edify network by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. We would also appreciate a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us reach a wider audience with the Christian Post daily podcast. You can also subscribe to our daily newsletter and get the top headlines delivered to your inbox by clicking that link in the show notes as well. Thank you again for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. <laughs>